there are so many attendees and the exposure was so nice that I'm sure people would have known more about our brand as well. It warms my heart to see people touched by the Filipino culture every single year. And I feel part of it being a partner of the Filipino culture. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Feast Ermita. Smile at the person beside you and tell them blessings are coming your way. For the entire month of September, we will be here at our new home at Provinces Place, Manila. Help us spread the word about Feast Ermita and invite your friends and family. For updates and special announcements, make sure to grab a copy of the Feast Ermita Bulletin and like us on Facebook at The Feast for Me. Are you a business owner or a startup entrepreneur? Are you looking for ways to promote your products and services? Do you want to help an event that blesses thousands of people? We are inviting you to become one of our mission partners for Kerygma Conference in 2018. For inquiries and more information, visit the Key Home booth at the lobby.
inyong lahat, mga kapatid? Ilan ang naniniwala dito na bibigyan ng saya ng Panginoon ng buhay mo? Taas ko nga, ito kayo. Amen? And can you tell about two or three people around you? Tell, that, tell those people, God will bring joy into your life. Amen. Are there first-timers here? Ano po bang first-timer? Ayan po, magandang umaga. Welcome to the Feast Carmita where you are loved. And mamaya po, kay uwi agad, we have a very special gift for you by our boy Alice. And also would like to greet those who are watching us online. One of these days, sana makasama namin kayo dito. So are you excited? Because today we are starting a brand new series entitled Leadership. How leadership is sacrifice. I want you to look at the person beside you. Mukha ba yung leader sa buhay mo? And if you are a leader, get this, brothers and sisters, kasama ng pagiging leader ang pagsasakripisyo. Amen? Alam niyo, isang araw daw, merong isang cruise ship. Tapos dun sa cruise ship, habang bumabiyay sila, Biglang nasa taas ng deck lahat ng tao enjoying the view. Biglang may nalaglag na batang babae. So lahat ng mga tao nagpapanik. Sabi niya, naku po, paano yung batang babae yung nahulog? Tapos out of nowhere, splash, may nahulog sa tubig. Tapos nilangoy yung bata. Kinuha, binalik, inakyat. So may mga media dun sa cruise ship. So they were asking, sino ba yung nag-rescue sa bata? Napaka-selfless naman. So nung nilapitan nila, basang-basa pa, gumaganon yung Chinese man, ang pangalan ng Chinese man, si Chong Lai. Sabihin nyo ngayon, Chong Lai. Nung tatanungin na siya ng media, Sir, how did you do it? Why did you jump for the girl? Bakit ka tumalun? Bakit mo niligtas? Nung sasagot na siya sa mic, ang sabi lang niya, Sino tulak akin? <laughs> Mga kapatid, tinulak lang siya. He was forced to do it. But while he was there, the point is, he did something with it. Amen? Amen? And I don't know, some of you might be saying, Brother JB, I was forced to become a leader. I had no choice. No one was leading in our family. No one was leading at work. I had to step up. But God is telling you today, brothers and sisters, God made you a leader. Amen? And whether you're, you're, you had no choice but to lead or whether you're being called to lead, God will empower you. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you and tell that person, God will empower you. So, you are, you are a great leader. And you might be saying, but, I, but I'm not a great leader, Brother JB. I, I, alam mo sa bahay, yung asawa ko hindi sumusunod sa akin. Yung, yung mga anak ko hindi sumusunod sa akin. Utang na loob, pati yung mga alaga namin, pusa at aso, hindi nga sumusunod sa akin. Brother JB, hindi ko nga ma-organize yung mga app sa phone ko. And why do you say that I'm a leader? You're a leader because little do you know, brothers and sisters, that your life, your influence has an effect on the people around you. Because plain and simple, leadership means this. Leadership is influence. And the way you live your life, the way you, you behave, your attitude, your personality affects others. Do you believe that? Yeah. And here's the thing. When, when the leader gets better, Everyone gets better. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you? Tell that person, I'm becoming better because of you. And according to John Maxwell, everything rises and falls with leadership. Okay, in the next four weeks, I'm excited because we want to awaken the great leader that is already in you. If you're ready, are you ready? If you're ready, let's all pray our favorite prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open up your arms wide. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
They will be reading a verse from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Can you read together? You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Can you tell the person beside you, shine? shine. shine. Hindi shiny yung noa dahil sa oil. But, alam mo, for, when I first read this, I felt that, Lord, parang ang bigat naman ang hinihingi mo. Kasi, inaayos ko pa din yung buhay ko. Marami pa akong kailangan gawin. Pero, now you are calling me, you want me to shine your light and be a light to the world. How do I do that? But you know what, brothers and sisters, here's what I discovered. If you will look at the dictionary meaning of shine, it is a verb that means to give off light or to reflect light. And sometimes it's hard because we think that the light should come from us, but in a very simple way, the solution is just to reflect the light of God that is shining on us. Alam niyo po nung bata ako, paborito kong laruan yung yung maliit na mirror sa, sa pressed powder ng nanay ko. Itanong niyo sa akin kung bakit. Kasi po, pag pumasok na yung ilaw mula sa bintana, ang enjoy kong gawin, yung, yung sunlight, itatapat ko dun sa maliit na salamin. Tapos, kaya kong papuntahin yung ilaw kung saan ko man gusto. Sa ilalim ng sopa, sa ilalim ng cabinet. And it can shine the dark places. When God is asking you to shine the light to others, He simply means reflect my light and my love to others. Can you tell the person beside you, reflect his light and love? Because how can we be a light to the world? It is only by reflecting Jesus in our lives. You tell your personal God story not just with your lips, but with your life. Amen? Naalala ko po sa work ko dati, sobra kong hiyang-hiyang mag-pray bago kumain. So bumibili pa lang ng pagkain habang nasa pila pa lang. Pagka ng pagkain, nagdadasal na ako. Kasi makikita ng mga office mates ko na nagdadasal ako. Naiya ako. Jahe. Ika nga nila. Pero one day, I was compelled na, Lord, o oh nga, no, you're calling me to be a light. So I must not be afraid of praying. So, kasi alam ko eh, mga, kadib mga kadibati ko, iba kong colleagues, yung iba doon agnostic, yung iba doon ay walang faith, o kaya hindi naniniwala. So, nagdasal lang ako. Hanggang after six months, nagulat ako, isa kong kasama sa office, nagdadasal na rin. Sabi ko, ba, okay ito ah. And then, you know what happened? Fast forward, nung ikakasal na po siya, kinuha niya po akong ninong sa kumpil. And I was asking him, why, why? Because I saw God in you. And little do you know, brothers and sisters, the way you live your life can reflect the goodness and the love of God. Amen? Amen. So are you ready to receive more of God today? If you're ready, I invite you to put your hands over your hearts. Dear Jesus, thank you for making me a leader. Teach me to lead like you, to love like you, to die like you. Use me to be a light and a witness of your great love for others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's raise our hands to the word of God. Take your seats, brothers and sisters. As you are sitting down, I want you to tell the person beside you, God will speak to you today. Woo! I'm so excited because this series will become really powerful for you. As I've said earlier, every one of us is called to be a leader. And our big message for today is this, you are a great leader. Hawakan mo nga yung kamay ng katabi mo, baka hindi pa rin siya naniniwala. Tingnan mo siya sa mata. Sabi mo sa kanya, you are a great leader. 
minsan lang hindi halata. Amen? And talk one will be about light. Can you say that word, light? And the talk will focus on vision casting. Because we believe that good leaders really know how to cast the vision to those who are following them. What am I saying? Leaders now have to know what is their point B. Alam niyo kung bakit? Itanong niyo sa akin kung bakit. Because plain and simple, leadership simply means you are at point A and you can clearly bring the people with you to point B. But how can you bring the people from point A to point B if you yourself don't know where point B is? Are you getting my point? Because point B must be very clear before people will make it happen. Alam nyo, isang araw daw, itong magkaibigang si Ernie at si Bert. Si, si Ernie po, isang araw, buhat-buhat na yung malaking washing machine, tinutulak niya palabas ng pinto ng kanyang kusina. etong si Bert, nakita siya, sabi niya, naku, kailangan niya ng tulong. Lapit si Bert, sa kabilang side, binuhat niya rin, di mga two minutes na lang sinusubukang tanggalin yung washing machine doon. Tapos napasabi na lang si Bert, Grabe Ernie, ang hirap pala nitong ipasok sa bahay mo. Tapos parang ang sabi ni Ernie, ha? Nilalabas ko to sa bahay ko. Di ba, minsan pag hindi malinaw, ano, anong nangyayari kapag di malinaw? Tanong niya sa akin kung ano? Ano? Malabo. <laughs> Di ba, minsan pag hindi malinaw, it's hard to go relate this. Sometimes this happens in our lives. Diba? You multiply the confusion a billion times. It happens to your families, your businesses. Diba? For example, sino po dito ang naghahanap pa ng kanyang partner in life? Naghahanap ng jowa? Meron akong tanong sa inyo, bakit ganun? Minsan pag manloloko, sineseryoso. Pero pag sineseryoso mo naman, nanloloko. Diba? Bakit ganun? Bakit yung lemon square below? Bakit yung boxing ring square? Bakit yung pure gold green? Di ba ang labo? And sa trabaho, nangyayari po yan. Uh, have you ever tried na may papagawa sa yung boss mo? Tapos pagdala mo sa kanya, binigay sa instruction, sabi ko, okay, gets. Pagdala mo sa kanya, napagalitan ka dahil hindi yun yung pinapagawa sa iyo. Have you ever experienced that? And it, it happens the other way. Kung pag ikaw na yung boss, minsan may papagawa ka, akala mo na gets na nung tauhan mo, Pero minsan, pag dilan niya sa'yo, iba sa tinanong mo. Do you know what's the problem in those situations? Sometimes, it's just clearly pointing out what is point B. And I believe communication is the important thing in that. Ako po ngayon, kaya minsan, di bali nang magmukha akong stupid, kahit magmukhang stupid question, pero if I have to ask it to my boss, I have to ask. Para mas malinaw kasi, sayang oras kung hindi. Do you agree? Tingnan ang katabi, sabi mo sa kanya tuloy ngayon, huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Because here's the truth, brothers and sisters, clarity is power. Amen? And when we look at the Bible, even in the Bible, Jesus knew how to be clear with his disciples when he gave, when he gave the last vision for the apostles. This happens in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It will be on the screen. I want you to read together. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in, Judea, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Why are we reading this? Because in this verse, ito po kasi from Acts. If you, you were here the past Sundays, yung Acts po sinulat din ni Apostle Luke. So this was all about the acts of the disciples. But here, ito yung huling habili ni Lord sa disciples niya before they sent them out to evangelize the whole world. And we will learn three practical lessons from this. So three principles to powerful vision casting because the Lord casted His vision in this verse. Principle number one, are you ready? Principle number one for a powerful vision casting, if you're a leader, start smaller. Look at the person beside you and tell that person, start smaller. Kasi alam mo, kung papansinin mo yung Acts chapter 1, verse 8, 
even the Lord knew. Kasi sa stage 1, sinabi niya, nung inutos niya, you will be witnesses in all Jerusalem, Judea, and then Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. Hinati-hati ni Jesus into stages. Stage 1, Jerusalem. Stage 2, Judea and Samaria. Stage 3, to the ends of the earth. Do you know that those three places, Jerusalem is small, Judea and Samaria is bigger, and then to the ends of the earth, of course, is the whole earth is bigger than they are geographically increasing circles. And in my honest opinion, kung ako si Jesus, madali lang sasabihin niya, let's conquer the world. Let's, let's, let's make God's love known to them. O Peter, pumunta ka sa Africa. O Simon, pumunta ka sa US. Philip, pumunta ka sa... But why did Jesus have the stages for them? You wanna know why? Because Jesus knew that success happens in stages. Do you agree? So, kailangan magsimula ka sa maliit para eventually yung malalaki kaya mo. Amen? Tingin sa katabi ulit, sabi mo sa kanya, magsimula ka muna sa maliit. For example, diet, magsimula ka muna sa maliit. Kung dati tatlong rice ka, edi mas maliit, dalawang rice ka muna. Di ba? Kaysa gagawin mo, no rice agad, kaya pala nahihilo ka na. Diba? Ang hirap po nun. So, four reasons why you need stages. Number one. Number one. You need to learn important lessons. Because Jerusalem will teach you lessons that only Jerusalem can. Not Judea, not the ends of the earth. Sometimes we learn some things in the place where we started. Kasi Jerusalem is where they all started. Sometimes gusto mo agad lumabas, lumayo, pero... Try to be there first because God will teach you something there. Next is, number two, you need to learn through failures. Tingin sa katabi ulit, sabi mo sa kanya, huwag kang matakot. Mag-fail. Amen? Sabi mo sa kanya, you can try again. And, di ba? Kaya start smaller because if you fail in Jerusalem, you, you only fail small. Number three, you need to learn to love the process. Maraming mga tao ang sinasabi nila, magiging masaya ako pag na-achieve ko na yung goal ko. E paano kung 20 years mo nang gustong i-achieve yung goal mo, hindi mo pa nararating? So ibig sabihin ba, magiging malungkot ka? Because here's the reality, brothers and sisters. 99% of the time, you're in the process. Amen? In the process of waiting in the process of building your career in the process of increasing your income so if you're not happy in the process mas mahirap maging masaya dun sa destination because most of the time you're just in the process you're, 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 you will be still in the process amen can you look at the person beside you and tell that person enjoy the process enjoy the process because here's the truth the process is the destination. Ito, babaguhin ko yung paradigm. The process actually is the destination. I was reading a book recently and sinasabi niya doon, sometimes people think that success happens one time. Pagka nakarating ka na, ito na yung gusto mong estado sa buhay, pero you want, you want a piece of reality. Ang totoong success nangyayari, unti-unti, araw-araw. You succeed one time of the day, com combine a lot of small wins, and then eventually, you will achieve your success. Isa pong example, about 2011, ang timbang ko po ay nearly 200 pounds. I was really overweight. And it was hard to lose weight because, ito yung sa akin kung bakit, ang sarap kumain. Tingin sa katabi, mukha pong masarap yung kumain. Diba? Lakas yung sigaw niya, yes na. <laughs> Bakit inubusan siguro siya. Eh. And ang hirap na, sinubukan ko bigla-bigla. Alibawa, no rice agad. Tapos parang hindi ka makapagtrabaho, nahihilo ka. Pero later on, Brother Bo taught us na dapat unti-unti stages. So I tried the 30-day challenge. You know what the 30-day 30 30-day challenge is? Pili ka ng isa, tapos gawin mo for 30 days, tapos that will become a new habit. So ang napili ko doon, 10-minute exercise every day. 
I started with that 10 minute exercise every day hanggang naging nakompleto ko for one month kasi pag di mo nagawa yung challenge, uulit ka eh. Nakompleto ko siya and then after that, nag-try ako unti-unti, half rice lang hanggang sa konti na lang yung, ano, yung meal. Pag nagde-date kami, hati kami ng girlfriend ko. Hanggang ngayon po, ito, na-achieve ko na. It, it becomes easier because it has become a habit. Kasi po dati rin, bago ako naging 200 pounds, may, may contest kaming magkakaibigan, mananalo ka ng iPad Kapag ikaw yung biggest loser, I lost 14 pounds. Napanalunan ko yung iPad, pero after 2 months, balik ako sa dati kong weight. Kasi hindi naging habit. But if you start smaller, you enjoy the process, it will become a habit. Amen? Tingin ka sa katabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, kaya mo yan. Mamaya, hindi na tayo magla-lunch. And number four, fourth reason, why you need to start smaller is that you need to learn to give as much hope as you can. Sino po ba dito ang leader na sa kanilang buhay? Dapat lahat kayo nagtaas ng kamay, ha? Kasi, di ba? You have influence in the people around you. You have a team around you. You have a wife. You have children. You have relatives around you. And one tip, if you're a leader, you must learn to give hope. Kasi alam mo, minsan sa society natin, ang nakakalungkot, doing your job is a given. So minsan, hindi ka napapasalamatan. Alam niyo yun, yung, yung ang dami mong nagawa, umabot ka sa deadline, pero pag, pag submit mo, ang ulang napuna sa'yo yung, ay, kulang ka ng ganito. O bakit wala yung ganyan? Di ba nakakalungkot? But if you're a leader, here's my practical tip to you. You should learn to actually thank the people around you. To encourage them. Ang isang technique daw po dyan, dapat sandwich approach. Can you, say, can you say that word? Sandwich approach. Purihin mo muna sa simula, then punahin mo, pwede ka na magpuna, and then sa dulo, purihin mo ulit. Para yung pagpuna mo na sandwich, hindi puro puna na. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you? Tell that person, gagawin natin yan. Because here's the truth, hope is a matter of life and death. No matter how brilliant your team are, no matter how energetic you are, no matter how many resources you have, kapag nawala ng pag-asa, game over. Everyone gets immobilized. And another way to give hope, you want another practical tip? Ask me, what's that? Diba, we've talked about that if there's a vision, there is hope. Kasi may malinaw na patutunguhan. But you, you want to make it in a way that it will give more hope? Alam niyo kung papano? Ask me how. A vision broken down into stages gives more hope. Kasi po kapag yung vision mo masyadong malaki tapos walang stages to achieve, yung mga tao ma-overwhelm. Ang tawag po doon, psychological indigestion. Parang classic example, di ba? Pag tinanong mo yung mga tao, pag sinabihan mo yung mga tao, eat the elephant. Marami sa kanila mapapaganon. Paano namin gagawin yan? Ang laki-laki ng elephant. Do you want to know how do you eat an elephant? How? Simple. Start one bite at a time. Di ba? So don't start small, start smaller. Because sometimes our ego is just getting in the way, it wants us to start big. For example, if in business, kung gusto mo magsimula ng negosyo, try mo muna na minimal overhead expenses. What am I talking about? For example, if you try, if you want to try a business, unang-una, huwag ka muna mag agad ng office space. Kung kaya na sa bahay mo muna, ipadala mo muna yung produkto mo, o kaya magbenta ka muna online. Naalala ko po yung una kong negosyo. I was selling digital cameras, pati mga, ayun, uh, consumer electronics. Nagsimula po yun dahil sa sobrang kulipot ko, gusto kong mahanap kung saan ba pinaka makakabili ng pinakamurang digital camera noong 2009. So after a while, nakahanap po ako ng importers. Dito lang sa Quiapo, meron eh. So, nung nakita ko yung presyo doon, tapos nakita ko yung presyo online, Sabi ko, medyo malayo ah. Sabi ko, okay. Nagbenta po ako online. Kasi ang goal ko naman na next, makabili ng camera sa pamamagitan ng benta. At alam nyo, nagsimula po ako yung tinatawag nilang puhunan mo ay laway lang. 
So nag-advertise na, kapunta ako doon, wala akong binili sa supplier, inalam ko lang kung anong tinda nila at kung magkano. Gumawa ako ng catalog, tapos pinost ko online, tapos may nag-inquire na, finally, may isang umorder. Ayun, tsaka lang po ako naglabas ng pera, bumili ng isang stock, dineliver, tapos pumalit na. And that is starting small. Because you know what? If you start small, you also fail small. Amen? Can you tell the person beside you, don't be afraid to start small. Kahit po sa investing, if you want to invest your money, here's a tip, dapat huwag kayong matakot, pero kailangan unti-unti lang. Huwag pa dalos-dalos. Kaya po maraming tao na sa scam o kaya kahit sa stock market, nawawala ng pera, it's because, sige, all in! It's parang because if you're still new and you don't know it yet, chances are may chance kang pumalpak, mag-fail. So if you start small, it will be better. In your ministry, if you want to start a ministry, halimbawa, Brother JB, gusto ko talaga magtayo ng feast eh. Sige po, i-rent ko ng cinema sa kabilang mall. Mag-hire ko ng sound system. Huwag muna ganun kasi nahihirapan ka. Uh, that, that's the very simple way. If you want the 70 people attending you, start with 7 people. Mag-feast video muna kayo. Have an LG. Meet every time through coffee dates. Talk about God. Share your life. And then eventually, if the seven is strong, the seventy will come. Why am I telling this? Because alam niyo po, recently nagkaroon ng Kerygma Grand Fee sa Singapore. And about five years ago, I went to Singapore. Nag-lead po na ako ng worship dun sa kanilang Kerygma Conference there. And back then, they only had two feasts. Ngayon po, alam niyo kung ilan na ang feast sa Singapore. Tanong niyo sa akin kung ilan. Now they have six feasts, having 100 plus attendees every feast. So that's around 600 people. But what's more amazing is that that started with just 12 people. 12 people meeting every week in a condo in Singapore, and they talk about God, and eventually they grew, they grew, and they grew. Amen? So don't be afraid to start small. So in a very practical way, I want to make this work for you. So we have an assignment. So can you bring out your phone? Sige nga po. Ang question ko sa, sa inyo ay ito. How much money do you want to earn every month? Ah, sabi ng iba, wala na akong problema. Tinago yung phone kasi kinikita ko na po yung gusto ko. Ready ko. Hindi. Diba? I know. Sino dito may pangarap na malaking sweldo? Eventually, taas ang kamay. Ayan po. Pakilista po. Ayan po yung Ihingan natin ang donation. Hindi <laughs> po, tama naman yan because you need to have more than enough so that you could bless others, you could support ministries, you could support the feast. Okay po ako dyan. Mahalaga that you have a big dream but let's try to apply this. Diba? You have this big amount, let's call that the to the ends of the earth amount but I want you to also think about what is your Jerusalem amount. So kung ito yung sweldo mo ngayon, probably in Jerusalem amount is 50% higher than what you have now or two times higher lang. So what is your Jerusalem amount? And on your phone, I want you to write down 12 months from now, so ilagay mo doon, that would be September 2019, I will be earning and then type the amount. So ayan, nasulat nyo na po. And I want you every day when you're praying, look at that. So that eventually, let's look at 12 months from now. You will achieve that in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Sige nga, say to the person beside you. Sabi mo sa kanya, Bess, kapag na-achieve mo yan, ilibri mo ako ha. Principle number two. Of powerful vision casting, dream bigger. Come to think of it, if you read yung Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that happened when Jesus already died on the cross and then the disciples were so scared. Diba namatay na si Lord, yung mga disciple niya, takot sila kasi baka sila yung tugisin at sila din yung i-crucify tulad ni Lord and then the Lord revealed himself to them in a, in a, in a lunch. And then he was telling them to, to go to the ends of the earth. And isn't that weird? Parang inisip siguro nila, Lord, teka, 
Hindi ko pa nga sure kung ano eh, bakit ganito. Yet God asked him to proclaim to the ends of the earth. My question for you is this. Do you, do you feel that? Do you feel that God is giving a huge vision for your life? Naramdaman niyo ba yun na parang tinatawag ka ni Lord gumawa ng isang malaking bagay? Sino pong nakaramdam nun? Taas ang kamay. Diba? Because here's the truth. That is God's way and that is God's modus operandi. God will always give you a vision bigger than your resources. You want to know why? So that you can do principle number three. Principle number three is that you must source higher. Your vision will always be bigger than your resources so that you don't depend on your resources but on your vision giver. And that is God. And, but before Jesus announced the vision, He supplied the apostles with what they need to fulfill it. Ang sabi nila, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And in one occasion, Matthew chapter 10, verse 10, when the first mission of the apostles, Jesus told them specifically not to bring bread, not to bring coat or staff or money in their bag. Because plain and simple, God wanted to be their bread and their bag. So sometimes God is calling you for a big vision. Tapos parang, Brother JB, parang wala naman akong resources to do this. Because God is teaching you something. You know, you know what's that? Ask me what's that? God is teaching you that He wants to be your resource. God wants to be your resource. And in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, just to, just to bring the other dimension of this vision of God, to proclaim His word to the ends of the earth, Matthew says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I am with you always to the end of the age. Ang ganda, no? Nagkast siya ng malaking vision. Takot na takot yung mga disciples. But then Matthew says that Jesus also told the disciples that I am with you always. So napansin nyo, ang weak leader, sasabihin niya sa'yo, go! Go make disciples or go do what, do what you must do. But a great leader would always say, not go, but let's go. Kasama mo. Can I share something with you? Okay lang po. Uh, nandito po yung wife ko. Palakpakan natin siya. We're celebrating five months of being married. At dahil nandito rin po yung nanay ko, gusto ko magpasalamat kasi po ang hirap palang trabahong bahay. <laughs> ang hirap maglaba, ang hirap maglinis, ang hirap magayos. And itong bagay na to, na-appreciate lang namin dalawa. Minsan pag nagkawentuhan po kami mag-asawa, na-appreciate lang namin nung naging mag-asawa na kami at may sariling bahay na kaming pinapatakbo. Ang hirap pala na yung alikabok o kaya yung buhok nagwalis ka, wala pang five minutes, may buhok na ulit. Tapos parang sabi kong hirap, nakakapagod. Minsan gabi na, naglalabo pa kami. Pero we're enjoying the journey. Amen? Because the journey is the destination. Tingnan mo ngayon katabi mo, sabi ko sa kanya, enjoy the journey. So going back to my story, we're five months married now, but I can remember two years ago, sobrang problema ko po, na, Lord, paano ako magpapakasal? Because at the time na ready-ready na kami, gusto ko na sana, that's the time also that my business failed. So sabi ko, Lord, paano ito? Ang hirap naman ito. Kung kailan ready na ako, kung kailan medyo nagiging tito na ako, Lord, tsaka pa ba? Tsaka pa ba, no? And then I remember that God wanted you to achieve your goals in stages. So, I started with the stage. Sabi ko, sige, sa LG namin, nung magkakasama kami, yung mga, kasi nauna na eh, medyo kaming dalawa na lang nahuhuli, dalawang couple na lang hindi pa kasal. Ang sabi nung, ang sabi nung, Nung mga ka-LG namin, naku, huwag kang matakot sa resources. Huwag kang matakot sa provision. Because God wants that couples pursue marriage. Because that is following His will. And when you do that, blessings will come. Naririnig ko sa kanilang lahat, pero sige, natatanggap ng utak ko, pero hindi ko pa rin ma-imagine paano mangyayari. 
Amen. Sino po ba dito may balak magpakasal? Taas ang kamay. Sabi mo sa kanya, balang araw. Yan. So, nandun ako, parang sabi ko, sige, let's try to do this in stages. I don't understand yet, Lord. I can't comprehend yet how this will happen. But I would not start. It started with, sabi ko, sige, first stage, I must buy the engagement ring. At alam nyo po, ilang taon ko inipon ng engagement ring. Tanong nyo sa akin kung ilan? One and a half years. Kasi po, kung hindi nag-fail yung business ko, kaya ko yung ipunin in two months. Pero ito, sige, one and a half year. Hindi okay. After that, proposal. Sabi ko, Lord, paano yung proposal? Gusto ko special, pero hindi magastos. nag talaga ako, Lord. Gusto ko special, pero hindi magastos. And you know what? The Lord sent sent his help. Umaten po ako ng Love Life Retreat. I gave a talk. Tapos habang nasa van kami pa uwi, napagkukwentuhan ko lang na Brother JP, may bala ka ba eventually mag-asawa? Ganda ko ko. Actually, bala ko nga mag-propose. Hindi ko alam. Yung isa pa lang kasama namin doon, nagtatrabaho sa GMA. At you know what? Naging kakonsyaba namin. Ang katulong ko sa proposal namin, itanong niya sa akin kung sino. Maris Umali at Rafi Tima. Sila yung nagkonsyaba kay Athena para kunyari interview. Tapos nangyari yung proposal. Sabi ko, wow, God is good. And the next stage is Lord Panggastus. That was the big problem. Nakapag-propose na ako. One year to go, Lord, panggastos. And you know what? Yung isa ko namang ka-LG from Bay Area, they own an IT company and then they, they tell me, uh, Brother JB, we have a new project. Can we get you as a project manager? And you know what? The rest is history. Ang pangarap namin mag-asawa, ikasal kami, na wala kaming utang at lahat ng regalo sa amin, maging ipon namin. Tapos yung Lahat mabayaran namin before the wedding day. You know what? It happened. I can say that partly, probably, it was because of what I did, but here's what I can say better. It happened because the Lord was with me. Amen? And I don't know your situation, brothers and sisters, can invite you all to stand up. We'll be now praying and worshiping God. You might be in a place where you're you're tired already and you're saying to yourself, Lord, pagod na ako. The task is too big. The, the challenge is too high. How do I do it? God is telling you something today. Start smaller. And then God is also telling you, dream bigger. But lastly, God is also telling you to source higher. I am with you always. The ruler of this world, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, is telling you today, brothers and sisters, I am with you in your finances, in the bills that you have to pay, in the tuition fee, in the provision that you need to give to your family, the provision that you need to help others. Today, God is telling you, I'm with you always in your health. In the healthy lifestyle you want to live, in the, in the sickness that you want yourself to be healed from, in the sickness that your relatives have, that you want them to be healed, God is saying to you, I'm always with you, I'm always with you. In the difficult situations of your lives today, brothers and sisters, in the hurts that you have, God is telling you, I'm always with you. I am leading you. You will become a great leader because I am your leader. Amen.
tell that person you're a great leader. Preparing your love offering and clothes. We have some announcements. And don't forget that we want you to write down your prayer requests here because we have an intercessory ministry na pinagdadasal po yan. At kung meron naman po kayong dalangin na nasagot na dito sa feast, sa pag-attend sa feast, gusto din po namin yung mabalitaan. Kaya, Isulat nyo naman po yan dito sa Thanksgiving for Answered Prayers. And we also encourage you, kung hindi naman po masyadong ano, isulat nyo din po yung pangalan nyo dito. So that when we, we we pray for you, we pray it specifically. Pwede po ba yun? So yun po ah. And also, next week, our venue will still be here. Uh, if you could notice around you, there are still a lot of empty seats. And bring bring someone, bring a friend next week. Amen. Hawa ka ng kamay ng katabi. Sabi mo sa kanya, let's bring a friend next week. Lalo na po, ang topic natin, leadership pa rin. So next week will be talk to and this will really empower you to becoming a great leader. Also, uh, since it's a National Family Portrait Day, uh, gusto po namin i-announce to that yung great image po dyan sa baba, they have a 50% off for everything. The services they have today. Uh, so, it's a good time to take your photo with your family, have a photo session today, and build good memories. Why are we announcing this? Because I'm just happy to say that the owners of the company of Great Image have been supporting us since day one in this feast. Palakpakan naman natin po sila. So, if you want to give back a little bit to them, have your photo taken. Naka-discount ka na, may maganda ka pang picture. Amen? So, also, ayan po, hindi ko mabasa yung iba. Kasi po ano eh. Oo. So ayan, so Can you bring your love offering envelopes and stand up? And alam mo, part of being a good leader is leading in giving. Amen. And ngayon pa lang, I want to honor each and every one of you. Because you're leading your life, you're leading your finances by giving to God. Amen. And when God says He is with you, even in your finances, God is with you. Natapusan na naman po. I know you had bills to pay. I know you're trying to make ends meet. But this I claim for you. God will bless you with more than enough so that you could be generous. Amen? So raise this up high and say this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being my provider. Bless me more so that I can give more. In Jesus' name, amen. So we join our hearts and smiles on our faces. Let's come forward and give our